Hey folks, this is Kalani. It looks like the Banhammer is in full swing right now, and it's directed at the new game on the block. When I first heard that a massive wave of bans was happening for World of Warcraft, I immediately jumped to retail and BFA. What trick are people exploiting now to get their essences faster, or grind artifact power faster, or get free loot from islands, or whatever else people exploit for? But no, this ban wave is for classic World of Warcraft. I guess it does make a bit more sense, there's potentially a lot more that can go wrong with Classic, seeing as various bugs from vanilla were purposefully baked into the game, and with this being more of a copy of vanilla than the actual thing, there's sure to be a few gaps here and there that people can exploit to their benefit. But there is a pretty big difference between one of the cute and funny bugs that is just part of that vanilla experience, and people going out of their way to exploit something new that has some pretty impactful ramifications. So, what's been going on, why were people choosing to repeatedly take advantage of this exploit, and what kind of punishment can the perpetrators expect to see? Let's start with the exploit itself. A lot of players have been farming dungeons, as you might expect, they're actually important when it comes to gear progression in Classic, best in slot pre-raid gear comes from dungeons, and a lot of the best in slot recipes for crafted gear come from dungeons as well. That's what makes this particular exploit so damaging. The general idea is that you clear to a certain boss that you want to farm, kill it, and then use the exploit so the boss respawns without having to reset the instance or really go anywhere at all. So you don't have to kill the trash like you usually would have to, and you can just kill the boss again. There's no re-clearing of the dungeon necessary. So use the exploit again, kill the boss again, rinse repeat until you have what you want. Then you can also do this again and again in any dungeon and for any boss that you want to kill over and over again until you get what you want from pretty much everything. Whether that's specific weapons, specific pieces of plate gear with perfect stats, the perfect ring, a trinket, a crafting recipe for best in slot tailored gear, anything you want really. It doesn't matter which boss it is in an instance either, whether it's the first boss, the second boss, or even the last boss, which would usually take an hour or more to get to. You were able to repeatedly farm any boss you desired. Some of those items aren't bound on pickup either, so you can sell them on the auction house and flood the market with more items than should be available. This has the potential to destroy several markets and put thousands of gold into the hands of cheaters. There was one chap who posted to Reddit explaining how the exploit works and what he's managed to achieve with it so far. He had over 10,000 gold. That's a ridiculous amount of gold for anyone in Classic right now, but perhaps the largest problem with this exploit is that it bypassed the instance per hour lock. Right now in Classic, I believe you can enter and complete 5 instances per hour before you're locked out of the dungeon system entirely. You'll be told you've entered too many instances and you should try again later. With this exploit, that 5 per hour limit was entirely bypassed. So, you have people farming very specific bosses for very specific items without having to reset the instance or clear the trash, and doing it as often as they want to without any strict limitations. Apparently, this wasn't just limited to dungeons either. There's two raids available right now, the Molten Core and Anixia's Lair. Because this exploit was achievable in instances, that meant people might have been able to farm raid bosses over and over as well. So if you see someone running around, decked out in epics from the Molten Core, they either got super lucky, they're somebody's GM, or they have been exploiting pretty heavily. You probably also won't see them again for quite a while. But how did this all work? How could something so crazy make its way into the game if this wasn't doable back in the days of vanilla? You've probably guessed it already, the one major feature or system that was implemented in Classic that just did not exist back then. The same feature that a lot of players have been abusing and complaining about for various reasons. Layering. This all comes back to layering. Layering creates new versions of entire servers, and I guess some part of that system was affecting the way dungeons are generated, because you could hop layers while in a dungeon, and that interaction would cause a new instance, or shard, or layer, whatever you want to call it, of the dungeon to be generated for you. Everything would respawn as it normally would, but you would maintain your position in the dungeon. So the dungeon is just regenerated around you, which usually isn't possible because typically you have to be outside the instance to try and reset it. 
From what I understand, the way this worked was you took five people into a dungeon, cleared to whatever target you had in mind, and then when you wanted to perform the exploit and reset the dungeon, you had one player leave and get invited across to a different layer. Then they would invite everyone from the previous group and kill the boss again. You could repeat it as often as you could hop layers, which is really interesting to me. That kind of makes this a little unreliable unless you have a very large pool of players to pull from. A lot of the larger guilds should be able to manage this with ease, but for anyone trying this on their lonesome, I imagine it would have been quite a bit more difficult. I think that makes this even more dangerous, because the organised guilds that are already exploiting any advantage they can suddenly have this huge carrot dangling in front of their face, an exploit that allows you to farm gold, experience, items, patterns, even random resources that drop from bosses, farm all of that stuff endlessly, efficiently, and without any limitations. That just has to be tempting, and I guess it was because a lot of players were doing it. Blizzard acknowledged that there was indeed an exploit, and it was bad enough to warrant an immediate fix with unscheduled realm restarts. That's not all though, as I said earlier, the ban hammer has been swung. The nature of this exploit, its setup, and its potential for damage seems to have Blizzard taking this very seriously. We've heard about one month, three month, six month, and permanent bans being handed out. Obviously, take that all with a grain of salt, because we're relying on hearsay and easily doctored screenshots for these punishment results and at the end of the day it's the people who are getting banned that actually have to come forward and say, hello, I've been exploiting and I got banned for six months. Most of them probably won't be doing that. But what we do know is that anyone who made significant use of this exploit should have been banned. Typically, with this kind of exploit, the more you use it, the heavier your sentence will be. So if you happened upon this by accident and killed an extra boss or two, you're probably fine and won't have much to worry about. The same thing if you just hopped in, did it once just to try it out and have a laugh. If you did this for maybe a day straight, farming some very specific items, that's probably where the more lenient bans are being handed out. But if you've been doing this for the past week, taking advantage of everything, farming everything from experience to gold and items, that's where the longer and maybe even permanent bans are coming in. No matter how much you are exploiting, how long you are doing it for, or what your ban is going to be, apparently in all of these cases Blizzard has said that the items gained from the exploit will be removed. I don't know if we'll ever find out just how far reaching that will be. Does that mean all of the recipes that were earned, sold, and then learned will be removed? What about the thousands of gold some players have collected from this? Will these players log back in in a month or six, or however long their ban is, and find a completely naked character? That would be kind of hilarious. Hilarious. But yeah, it looks like exploiting this time didn't pay off for the vast majority of players who took part in it. Not only will they lose access to those accounts for a significant period of time, but they'll lose everything they gained in the process of trying to jump ahead of everyone else. Usually with this kind of thing, if it's a timed ban but they don't get rid of the items, most people kind of think it's worth it because they got so far ahead that taking a month break doesn't really leave them anywhere behind. That's definitely not the case in this instance, and I'm pretty glad that Blizzard have decided to be so heavy-handed with this and to strip all of the ill-gotten items as well. Now, I do assume, because most of the players who are making use of this exploit are some of the more dedicated classic players, that most of them are probably back in the game already with a new account trying to catch up as quickly as possible. Thankfully, a lot of the leveling and experience exploits have also been fixed, so they won't be able to take advantage of those any time they're grinding back to max level. Now, I have seen a lot of discussion about this exploit and the subsequent bans, specifically asking the question, is this really a fair judgement? Should players have been banned for using this exploit? And I'm kind of surprised that there's still an argument being made for the offenders here. I know the mantra of exploit early, exploit often gets thrown around because Blizzard has been a little lax with their punishments in the past, but honestly, not for the last expansion or so. Even during Legion, they weren't hesitating to dish out some major time behind bars for things like artifact power or world quest exploits. But when you take a game like Classic, where pretty much everything is meant to be done kind of slowly, and you suddenly find this exploit that not only allows you to farm bosses incredibly quickly, way quicker than was ever intended, but to also bypass an in-game restriction of how many instances you can enter or complete within an hour, I mean, you have to know that's not going to be treated as a minor thing. You're actively circumventing one of the game's laws. The fact that you bypass the 5 instance per hour limit is enough to suggest that this will be taken quite seriously. 
I think the nature of how you actually initiate this exploit also lends itself to a serious punishment. This isn't something you can do accidentally, and I know some chaps walked into a raid and the entire thing reset when they were halfway through. While that might have had something to do with layering, they didn't purposefully set it up that way, and they didn't do it repeatedly. I honestly think that's one of the most important factors here too. When you find a bug or an exploit and you take advantage of it once and think, well, that was weird, that doesn't seem like it should have happened, and move on, or maybe even file a bug report, god forbid, that's very different than saying, that's not working properly, but I can take advantage of this and level faster, or gear faster, or get gold faster. Any advantage you gain from an exploit makes the exploit more dangerous to perform. The more you get, the higher the chances of you getting banned. The more you use the exploit, again, the higher the chances of you getting banned. I think it's pretty ridiculous to think any of these players shouldn't have been banned. Maybe the chaps who did it once to see if it worked and called it a day, sure, they probably don't deserve that much. But for anyone who went into this with the pure intention of making use of this exploit to farm specific items or recipes or really just anything in general, it doesn't matter what they gained from it, in my opinion actively entering a dungeon to make use of this exploit is enough to send some of the punishment your way. There was a blue post which explained the dev team's decision to unleash the ban hammer for this specific exploit, which basically says the same thing. If you know you're exploiting and you have to do something very specific to trigger an exploit, which in this case you do, you can't do this without actively taking your party apart, transferring layer and putting the same group back together. You can't do that accidentally, and even if you could, you're not doing it accidentally for hours on end now, are you? So when you have to go out of your way to trigger the exploit, that's really the big line in the sand. As soon as you do that, as soon as you cross that line, you should expect to see some consequences. I'm really interested to see how many players this ban wave will actually affect, and what knock-on effects we'll see for things like server economy, or even server queues. I imagine a lot of the people were on the populated realms, so if those queues suddenly get cut in half, Maybe that's something to do with the ban hammer. I also assume that all of the hard to get recipes that come from last bosses or dangerous bosses at the very least in some of the last dungeons in the game, they're probably going to skyrocket in price because they're no longer able to be farmed as efficiently and any ill-gotten recipes will likely removed from the game. If you were holding on to any of them because you figured you might be able to flip them for a nice profit after this whole exploiting thing calmed down, you might log in to see some empty pockets. This could affect a lot of players in a lot of different ways. A new layering was going to be interesting to work around and work with, but I never expected it to cause so many issues. You can use it in a variety of ways to either respawn mobs or dodge the opposite faction. There are a lot of uses and potential abuse to happen with layering, and I wonder if the dev team wishes they had thought of a different method to handle the huge influx of players for the launch of the game, and I'd be curious to see if any of them actually regret the decision to use layering. Layering will be turned off eventually, but maybe it's done too much damage already. If we go forward into new classic servers like the Burning Crusade or Wrath of the Lich King servers, will they bring layering back for the launch of those new additions, or will they look at what has happened with classic so far and try to go down a different path? I hope we get some answers to these questions, because I really do find it fascinating. Managing the beast of classic World of Warcraft has definitely been an adventure so far for the dev team, but with how popular it seems to be, it definitely looks like it's going to be worth it in the end. But that's all I have on the recent exploits, what people were doing, how they were benefiting, and ultimately what their fates were. How do you feel about these exploits making it into the game? Was the addition of layering and the benefits that came with it worth all of the hassle that it caused. What do you think about the bans and the item deletion? Is that punishment fair in your opinion? Or do you think the ban hammer was swung maybe a little bit too hard? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, if you want to see more make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.